Once upon a time, in a little known place called Rickman, Tennessee, a little girl came into this room named Betty. And the story started. And they're not about to stop. Each of you are a chapter in that lady's life story. And you've each got your own entries from your side of the uh, pen. She has hers. And together, you've written quite a library. Before we get started, David, there's a few things I want to let you know first. Uh, Tori's going to come up and, and say a few things here in just a few minutes. Uh, always make it a, a habit to invite anybody in the family that would like to speak, or if those whose life we are honoring has left something behind to be read, we always let the family go first. I believe that's only proper. It's part of the taking care of the family that's still here. I think it's the right way to handle that. Second, it is my severest loss not to have known this lady as much as you. I am so much the poorer, and you are by far so much the richer. There are some folks that you wish you had known since you were old enough to climb a, a chair and sit down next to them. I've got a strong hunch that Betty Pritchard is one of those kinds of people, because you've got to do that, and a lot more people besides. And for that reason, I'm not going to try to pretend to be Miss Betty's life historian. That would not be fair to you in any sense of the word, and it would not honor her memory. That is sacred real estate. That's sacred places that I am not permitted to trespass in my home. But if you allow me just to simply say on behalf of the family, for you to have come to help this family weep and celebrate Betty's life, we're humbled and thankful. February 19th, 1943, in Rickman, Tennessee, Betty Pritchard was born. 28th of August of this year, she passed. Spending most of her life in the city of Pendleton. She graduated from Salina High School in the state of Tennessee. And for many years, worked as a retail clerk in the grocery store of Mesa's and Marshall's. Among the things she loved to do include bird watching, snuggling up with cutie, I suspect you saw pictures of that very important member of the family. Gardening, and most importantly, spending time with the people that she loves. She's survived by these loving children, Misha Owens and Marty and Don Pritchard, grandchildren, Greg and Kate Owens, Tori and Lindsay Owens, Marley Pritchard and Conley Pritchard. Great grandchildren, the stars on any grandparents' crown. Brody, Ryland, Emery, and Luca. Betty is also survived by her sister, Miss June Gall. Many nieces, nephews, and cousins. And I suspect, in all fairness, to say if, if blood is not the issue, she's got a family that's larger than you can count. Miss Betty was preceded in death by her husband of 59 years, past the 21st of May of last year, Buddy Pritchard. A son in law, Troy Owens six siblings, and her mother and father. In thinking about what we would say today and trying to give some help and comfort and encouragement to the family, the one passage from Scripture that came to mind is in the 14th chapter of Mark, starting in verse 3. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as Jesus sat at the table, a woman, having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard, broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wasted? It might have been sold and or sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they sharply criticized her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She's done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not always have. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. And surely I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be
be told as a memorial to her. Let's bow forward in prayer and the glory will come to speak. Holy Father, this has been quite a journey for this family. You know better than anybody else the joys and the sorrows, the sufferings and the gladness that this family has all shared. From this very beginning, when two people fell in love 50, over 59 years ago, and we're grateful, Father, for the opportunity to, to have, in whatever measure, and however much time to be engaged, in the time that we've been allowed to spend with Miss Betty, we just give you thanks, and that seems awfully hollow and empty. But we're grateful, Father, for the riches of the blessings that she has imparted and invested in so many lives, and many, many more than we fill this room. We pray, Father, your riches of treasures and comforts from Marty, from Misha, for this precious family in this hour of, of remembrance and honor. We pray that you help us to say and look back and see those things that are the most encouraging in that building, all the while realizing, Father, we have come to the end of our journey with her here. She and Buddy had an awful hard time with those plagues of sickness. And when the time came for her body to lay to rest and her spirit to go home, and you gave her rest, we give, we give you thanks. But we pray, Father, you help us to go through this hour of encouragement, remembrance, and celebration of her life in a way that takes care of the very best way of her, of her family, her loved ones, and truly honors her. Through Jesus, we pray. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. We're gathered here today to remember and honor the life of Betty Rose Christian. Uh, again, thank you all for gathering to show your love and support for her, her family, and her friends. For anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Tori, and Betty is my grandmother, or Mama also called her. <clears throat> it's an honor to stand here today and briefly speak on behalf of the family about this loving, beautiful, and kind woman. Mama was born on February 19th, 1943 in Richmond, Tennessee, and resided most of her life in Hamilton, as you all heard. I think everybody in this room knows that. Uh, when Mama was young, her dad passed away. After his death, her mom, that we all knew as Mama Daniel, uh, raised the five children that were left at home by herself. As any of you can imagine, that's a tough task for Right. Uh, Mom often spoke with admiration at the strength and love that Mama Daniel always showed uh, while raising all those children. It inspired her to be the loving mother uh, that she is today. So, Uncle Marty and my mom, Misha. <clears throat> Mama was married to Paul, uh, buddy, for 59 years. Mama was the sweetest lady you ever met, and Paul was the honoriest guy <coughs> that you ever met. Uh, they balanced each other out well. I think anybody here that knows them and saw them together uh, knows the truth of that. Uh, it's a beautiful thing and, and lasts a long time. Uh, when I think of memories of Mama and Paul, <coughs> I, I always have the memories together. It's just Mama and Paul. Uh, and they were together. That was it. From, the, from as young as I was until now. <coughs> and I think of that now uh, with Mama passing, that she's back with Paul. Uh, that makes me happy. I think it makes her pretty happy as well. Again, uh, they had a daughter, <coughs> Misha, which is my mom, unable to make it today. She's in the hospital. Uh, she's doing well and getting better each day. Son, Marty, uh, which is my uncle. Two grandsons, Greg, my older brother, uh, myself. Uh, two beautiful granddaughters. Marlon County. <clears throat> Three grandsons, Brody, Rylan, and Luca, and one great granddaughter, <clears throat> Emory Roots. A little harder than I thought. <clears throat> Mama was the epitome of unconditional love and kindness. Those that knew her loved her, and those that she knew felt that love. Uh, when you went to Mama and Paul's, you were always going home. As you pulled in the driveway, you could see her and Paul pulling back the curtains. 
they'd be peeking out with like excitement. And it was it was always a funny thing when you pull up, I'll just see how excited they would be for you to be there. Uh, and again, just always felt just that love of going home. Like, and I always felt that, you know, Marvin Conley, Greg, never here felt that too. <clears throat> when you left home on pause, she blew what seemed like a thousand kisses. Be like running out towards the car. They'd both be waving and everything. Uh, and to be honest, I think that I think that we each relished <clears throat> each and every one of those. Uh, Where Mama went, she took home with her. It's a special gift that you had, and we we're grateful to experience it. She was someone to truly listen when you had troubles. Uh, when you were done talking to her, you always felt better, like she magically knew <clears throat> how to take them away. Again, it's a special thing <clears throat> that few people have. Uh, I think we got to experience it, and uh, I just appreciate it. All right, on the good stuff, right? Some special memories uh, that I hope remind you of Mama. And, and I know everybody here has different memories too, um, and the friends that were able to come and friends back home. So I know this is just a few, and it's really just hopefully sparks some of those memories that you have. Uh, first one, you know, we talk about unconditional love and kindness, and everybody knows that is like the epitome of mom. I mean, she's just, just again, just a beautiful woman through and through. Uh, so we also know that she's nicer in one day than Greg's accomplished in 40 years. <laughs> one, one day, 40 years, he's still working on it. <laughs> a, a bushel in a pack and a hug around the neck. Um, uh, cuddles and smooches, right? Mama's always just good for cuddles and kisses and just love. She was voted the prettiest girl in her high school senior class, and Mama was proud of that. And she was a pretty woman, a beautiful woman inside and out, and always will be. Oh, honey, get over here and give your mama some sugar. Yeah, back to those kisses, right? It's always some sugar. Four leaf clovers. I don't know how she did it. Probably guys supposed to be the luckiest woman ever. She should have gotten one of those lottery tickets. <laughs> should have transferred over. She could always find a four leaf clover every time she looked. I still don't get it to this day. Uh, she pulled it off. Guardian angel. She gave me an angel that I wore. <clears throat> I have it today when I went to Iraq back in five. Instant <clears throat> messenger. <clears throat> her smile. Bird beaters, benches, hummingbirds, fried chicken, chocolate gravy, and homemade biscuits. <laughs> so, got them there and eaten. Uh, you know about the food. Uh, the bird feeders are special, particularly to Uncle. Uh, that's why he has them to this day, why he loves birds and also plants flowers and also a bunch of other weird stuff. He's kind of, he's kind of girly. <laughs> But his mama had that big effect uh, for him. Uh, some things that mama loved. Um, she did love working at Macy's because more so with the people. Because um, again, she's just all about just love, right? Um, her cat, Peanut. I don't really know if she loved that cat or not. <laughs> I know I didn't. I know Greg didn't. I'm not sure if anybody else did. But, but for some reason, that cat seemed to love mama. And she loved that cat. Uh, we already covered the dog cutie uh, as the ugliest dog <laughs> of all time. I don't know. Again, she loved it. Uh, sewing, reading, uh, African violets, scrabble, thimbles, three handed euchre, and sweets. Mama and Paul always had sweets, right? I don't know which one that was more, whether it was Paul or Mama. But I, think, I think it was Mama when I think back on it. Uh, it is always sad to say goodbye to those we love. Uh, we ask that you remember with fondness the special memories that you have and continue to share them with open hearts. <clears throat> as long as those memories are shared, our loved ones will never be lost. Mama taught us, taught us to be kind to others, to put family first, and in our later years, the importance of living every single day of our lives to their fullest. I always say that because you never know, <clears throat> you know, when it's going to be your last day. Um, or you're going to be in a place to know that it's your last day. Her patience, selflessness, generosity, and kindness will continue to inspire those who have, who have had the privilege of knowing her. Uh, we love her with all of our hearts, and we will miss her dearly. Uh, and we
and I love you, Mama, and thank you all. I don't know how you can say anything better than that. There are uh, those folks who have a better ability of writing their own eulogy than anybody can ever stand by a microphone in front of a camera and repeat it. I think this lady's already done that. Matter of fact, she's done some writing of her own. I'm told she was a bit of a poet, uh, which in some circles comes down to a, a mindset of being a, a bit of a romantic, whatever that means. Someone who can see things through a very different eye, find the beauty in it, put that beauty down on paper and share it. It's quite a rare talent. Jesus made a statement in Mark chapter 14. What this woman has done. And I just kind of stuck in my head as I thought about today. What has this woman done? But well, you've heard a whole lot. You've seen a whole lot. You've lived a whole lot and seen the first hand, first person. You know better than I ever will that she didn't want to just exist. She lived. She loved. No. Let me reframe that. A good friend of mine who deals in grief counseling says, we well, asked the question once, you know what the difference in the sun in the month of February and the month of July is just a little farther away in February. And as much as we would want her closer, she's just a little farther away. And for that reason, I'm going to say she, she lives, she still loves, but she's left you a legacy. Most of that legacy you already lived and shared with her. Some of the things that we gathered, and being with Billy and the other folks in the family, the party and family the other night, just a few things kind of stuck in my mind. What did this woman do? She shared a life with family in one of the grandest places, evidently, on the earth, because there's a whole lot of folks in Indiana and just can't wait to get to Tennessee. <clears throat> especially in that section she grew up in. Spending childhood with seven siblings, married the one man in those hills that she could have picked out of anybody to spend the rest of her life with. And he was lucky enough to marry the prettiest girl in senior class. How do you beat that? And through it all, they stuck together. Come what may, coming to Indiana with two children to make Indiana their home, well over 50 years ago. What did this woman do? She showed you what certain words mean. Words like devotion, dedication, value, not monetary, but what really means something in terms of value. What she added to all the people and places makes up what she has done. Her devotion to her husband, to her two children, to sticking it out in Indiana with him when she could have enjoyed Tennessee a whole lot more, perhaps. And through all those moments that they faced together, to become a part of, well, at one time she even became part of the Hot Wheels track. Uh, I don't know what maybe Osmosis through the tires helped him pick up some of the stuff from mom. That's more scientific than we need to know. But I've never met a mom yet whose devotion was quite equal to that who would let a child turn her into a hot wheel track and love every second of it. What's this woman done? She's influenced you. No, present tense. She's still influencing you. You're here because of her influence. And not just known inside the house, 
but outside the house and grow years in mesas, marshes. Kids at school who knew who Marty and Misha was because they knew mom. As her life touches who knows how many, <laughs> not just in private life, but in public life. And I'm told she became quite the V. How do you get to the place at Cracker Barrel when you walk in, the manager sees you, you don't stand in line. You get to go right to a table. That, that's, that's pretty high up there on the totem pole of life. <laughs> Never allowed to wait in line, but the manager, Robert, I believe, and they went off they would go. She influences you by the things she teaches. I think each of us, one way or another, whether we sign up for the job or not, we become teachers. Miss Betty is certainly one of the best you'll ever have. <coughs> Teaching you the value of people that's greater than the value of anything. Including chickens. If you remember anything else I say, and I won't be insulted if you don't, remember one thing that both Buddy and Betty shared. It's the very same sentence. Chickens are made for eating, not petting. <laughs> if you want to know the story behind that, you've got to talk to Mark. <laughs> I'm told she was rather fond of Don Williams' music. As you said, waited to talk to folks here today, you heard all kinds of country music. All that stuff just kind of defines or part of the definition of the person that she'll always be to you. I don't think you're going to hear Johnny Cash saying Ring of Fire the same again. Or Country Boy Can Survive, or Through the Years, or any of the, any of the songs that have been played or the ones you know she liked the most. Every time that song starts in your presence, one of the first images that's going to come to your mind is that sweetest memory, Betty Pritchard. What's this woman done? She's left you with a message of faith. I, as I try to warm up, I was privileged to be one of the few to see something that she wrote in hand before she got into the depths of the dementia that she suffered for far too long. I think we high high degree of dishonor for me to read those words to you because that was something she said to God. Before the onset of that dementia, she went to the Lord with pen and paper. And more than anything else, she wanted, whether she understood what she was fixing to go through or not, she wanted to make sure that the books between her and heaven were balanced before she couldn't do anything about it. What's this woman done? <laughs> She's left you a legacy. And if you'll pardon, no, I'm not going to ask you to pardon the hillbilly language. She ain't done with you yet. Not one of you. Yeah. She's left a legacy in all the things that have been said from Tori that we mentioned here in so many more ways. Jesus asked, What's this woman done? Well, if you're asking about Betty Pritchard, you're better qualified to answer that question than anybody in this world. Because you're living proof of what this woman's done. And the great thing about it is, as long as eternity lasts, she's never going to be done. Let's bow. Holy Father. A long, long time, even before the sickness has set in, words of praise and prayer have been sent up to you on behalf of Miss Betty and for her family. And we continue to plead on their behalf for the choices and sweetest of comforts and blessings for Misha and Martin, for everyone that makes up a part of this precious lady's life, and she a part of theirs. It grieves us to know, Father, that we are so limited here. Grand scheme of things. We don't have very long to hold each other's hand and share each other's company, to sit in each other's presence and share those stories, talk about troubles, try to be of help to each other. But we're grateful for the time you give us through that. 
and the influence that she will continue to have in the lives of those who will always love her. In the lives of those that she will always love. We're grateful for the company that comes from those memories. For the real first person time each person got to spend with her. And how those things can be shared to help her to live on in the lives of those who didn't get to know her quite as well. Just bless this family, Father. Help us to do all we can and do all the good we can to honor her by taking care of those who are still here. And help us to so order our steps to balance our books like she did before she got sick. To make sure that we're okay with you until you call us on. Through Christ we pray. Amen.